Here's some of the specs on this tractor I got. It was an International Harvester B414. It was made between 1961 and 1966. Uh, some of the other stuff. The overview. Made in Bradford, England. $2,900 in 1967 for the original price, US, brand new. I have the 2.3 liter four cylinder gasoline engine. They made a lot more of the diesels, which, whatever. Uh, fuel, 48 liters. 311 for the hydraulic. It's got the three point hitch. Uh, PTO. Wheelbase. Here's some good. The engine, 43 horsepower. Uh, 32.4 kilowatts. Draw bar claimed 31 horsepower. PTO is 35 horsepower. Whatever. Uh, it's pretty good. Pretty good all around tractor for specs wise. In my opinion. Uh, English did things a little weird with their electricals. A lot of them had positive ground, but my tractor is a negative ground. And I say that because the ground is connected straight to the chassis. So, and so mine is a gasoline. So the serial numbers. Gasoline, 1964. So mine's between 1964 and 1965. I got my serial number is 4,900 and something. So 65 is 5,600 and 64 is 3,900 made. So I'm between 64 and 65 on the year. Yeah, it's pretty cool to find all this stuff. And it is 12 volt. The gas is 12 volt. So, it's pretty cool to see that all this stuff is on here. I will get deeper into the tractor because I'm going to redo all the wiring in it. It's not very much. It's only six or seven wires, so it's really not much. But... It, it is having some electrical issues. Like, we did drive it onto the tractor, or onto the trailer to load it. And, uh, it wouldn't start when we got it back home after the drive, so. And it did take a bit to get the spark to go from my mechanic buddy when we picked it up. But, anyways, I'll get her all running. It's pretty good, uh, strong tractor. You know, 40 horsepower, that's pretty, pretty heavy duty. Like my neighbor's tractor, it's four wheel drive and it's like 60 horsepower and it's got a full cab and everything. So, anyways, thanks guys. Not bad for a few hours work on the old pig here. Got the bush hog all ripping nice. Do you need to get some grease? I got the grease gun, I just don't have a tube of grease for it. Gotta go over everything, grease it all up. Got the whole backfield bush hogged. All of it. I hear that if you get rid of like the weeds and stuff and cut it a couple times, the grass will grow quicker than the weeds. So it will uh, be better for animals. Did over here a bit too, and in front of the panels. I didn't really do this little stretch here. Firewood's kind of falling over. 
and I gotta tomorrow or whenever I get a chance I'm gonna uh, start dragging logs around I'm pretty good I think it took about two three hours to do the whole fields about two and a half acres Fun. No power steering though, so you can feel her. And I'm gonna get some pins for the bucket. And I can put the bucket back on there. And I would like to get the back drag. Like there's a drag blade that'll go on the three-point hitch on the back. Get that guy off working. Then I can take out this back shed here and I can lift these battery cases with ease and I take this shed out here and I'm gonna level all this and maybe get some loads of gravel put in there and that'll be where my bandsaw mill is gonna go and this area will be my milling area and, and yeah getting there yeah, I just think this so there's a quick look at my tractor. Paid almost nothing for it, for what it is. It's a 1964 International Harvester B414. It's not in the greatest shape. It has a lot of old stuff that can be changed. I'll probably buy a seat. I was even thinking I might just take the seat off this thing here and slap it on there, but. I might just buy a new seat. Princess Auto has them on pretty cheap. This back wheel needs to be unseized. I need to get a couple tubes of grease or a grease gun. I gotta grease all the parts everywhere. And like it showed, I was wondering if there was a way to turn that PTO off, but like it says on the thing, it's a live PTO. Which means that uh, it runs all the time. So now what I haven't tried is putting it in high gear and seeing if the PTO goes faster in high gear because it does have a high low range. I took it on the highway or on the road yesterday, not the highway, and uh, you know it goes pretty good in fourth gear, not uh, in high range. It's not bad on the road. A little bit bumpy, but like it's got a little hump to it, but that's yeah, not bad. This guy I gotta get freer. Should be much easier than that to spin. I might end up taking it apart. All I did with yesterday was WD-40 it. It was totally locked, but it does spin a little bit now. Or not spin, uh, turn, sorry. It spins fine. Yeah, and I don't have any good stabilizers. I do have these things, but they're pretty far off for shifting it back and forth. A bit of tuning needs to be done here, but did cut the whole field. It was probably a good two, two and a half, three hours of cutting yesterday, so and all the lights can be fixed up. If she starts today, I don't. I didn't check the battery to see which way the switch works there, the keys switch. So I don't. It could be draining the battery right now, for all I know. Not that there's anything on it to drain. Everything's disconnected. But and I need to get some pins for the bucket. I do have the bucket. I never tried these guys yet. I don't even know how much fluid is in there for hydraulic fluid. The arm does go up, but I didn't try those ones. So it is just a downforce, or it's only got hydraulics going up, and then it's like a forklift where you just push forward and it comes down by itself. Where if you look, these uh, rams can be up and down force. But the way it works, I don't need it. Even with a load on it, it goes down just fine. But you can see it does have it does have the fittings for up and down. Yeah. There's my high-low range gear right there. You can kind of 
turn off and on the hydraulics which one you want the front or the, the three-point hitch so and these are the hydraulics for the three-point hitch which will lift it and lower it and that's great for cutting grass cuts trees everything so, and the steering wheel cut my hand because it's just getting rotten no power steering either so it's pretty tough to steer I don't mind though did a pretty nice job out in the field so wouldn't mind getting a, a plow I heard a three a furrow plow this thing won't be strong enough for it so I'm thinking maybe a two or a one furrow plow that goes on the three-point hitch just so I can kind of till up a little path and then one of my buddies has got a farm there. He's got a rotor tiller and all that stuff. So post hole digger or auger, I guess you'd call it. And then I can start putting in holes for posts once I get the sawmill and I can start making a pole barn so I can house this thing. Anyways, thanks guys. Seems to pull pretty good. Second. extra on the oil flow here this is the transmission oil the engine oil doesn't look bad the engines up here this is the engine oil but this one is this drain here is the overflow so you only fill it up till it starts coming out of there and i've took it out probably uh oh i don't know how much extra in there probably three four liters extra that there should not shouldn't even be in there so i was planning on just topping it off with new stuff until it came out of there but obviously uh it needs to be changed now there's a bunch of drain spots so there's one here one here and one more at the back I believe for the rear end it's like just low spots where they drain from so I'm gonna have to get quite a few more liters should have bought a big jug of it or like a five gallon pail I think it holds about six gallons something like that which is what, 24 25 liters 26 liters. I'm not sure if it's US or Imperial. Probably Imperial because this is made in uh, England. So, but 
I did fill up the hydraulics. So this tractor actually didn't come with the, the front end on here, like the lifter. So this was an add-on. That's eh, good that I know what's going on with the tractor. I wouldn't want to keep driving it too long with the transmission oil like this. I'm gonna need a bigger spot to put all this oil. Actually, I'm a little bit tilted too. I'm tilted a bit that way, so it's not fully level, the tractor. But I'll let this drain for a while. I may even just undo that bottom one up there. We're pretty close to where it should be here. Or fill. Maybe a quarter inch or so over the fill limit. Now, it was probably quite a bit over before. But that's the water. That's the same water it got in here from probably sitting. Like, there's a lot of leaky zones that could possibly let water in on the top. Especially if the tractor's been sitting outside for the last three years. Maybe even longer. But I do need to go over everything. Probably end up doing something with this exhaust. It is pretty rotten out on the bottom. She was smoking pretty good. I think a, a chipmunk or an animal was stashing nuts in there she smelled pretty woody like there was a wood fire coming out of the muffler just little stuff you know and i said in earlier that the pto can't be shut off but this is actually the shut off switch for the pto it's supposed to be we'll see if that actually works and i was one wheel peeling before and i've seen that this this pedal here is my diff lock so this should lock the the back wheels to make a, a posi kind of rear end but, nah we're not quite there yet anyways i want to get the bucket put on i got all new pins got all new pins for all these areas here this one this one this one this one and I'm gonna put the bucket on there. Guess I should fill up the tires. Yeah, lots of stuff to do here. Wouldn't mind giving a quick wire brush too and maybe eventually give her a new paint job. Man, tractors have gone up incredibly high for value. Like I seen when I first started looking, I couldn't find a tractor with a loader on the front in reasonable shape for under $3,000. Now I can't find one for under $5,000. So honestly, I could probably triple or five times my money on this if I were to sell it. These kind of tractors pretty much hold their value forever as long as they run and they're not broken or cracked in half or anything like that. But I need it myself. So I was thinking either a tractor or a forklift because I mainly need a lifting device. But now that I got the tractor that came with the bush hog, came with the bucket, came with the back drag, I can grade my driveway. I can cut my back field. I'm going to put forks on the bucket so then I'll be able to lift batteries and anything I need to lift. So pretty much a good all around unit for my needs anyways thanks guys I'm gonna keep working on this thing here so she's a little hard to operate with one hand but we'll give her a shot I'm just digging right now trying to dig up a new garden here it's hard to get it perfect.
digging up a bit of the grass here to try and make another garden. I wanted more in the sun instead of that garden over there. It's all rotted. I'm going to dig this part up here a bit. way and push it a bunch this way and I gotta pick out all the wood and garbage that's in there tires did pretty good so finally got my chainsaw close to where I want it got the new plastic cover this is the handle is off an 88 but the side cover is off uh, 61 or whatever, 68. So it's a different chassis for this handle. But with any other handle but the steel handles, uh, 
it would be way too close to the bar because it comes more straight up and down the handle angle here. So it was a hassle. But I know a guy that's got lots of parts for everything. Or 288 handle actually, whatever. 288 handle because it's got a different size motor chassis with bigger bearings and stuff in it. Where I believe a 272 will still work on this chassis. So like a, the top end, I could take the 68 uh, cc top end off and put a 72 cc top end and this will be a whatever a 7, 272 instead of a 268 so it's pretty cool how everything kind of interchanges on here wouldn't mind cleaning up this cover too I'm actually probably going to cut this bubble off here and make a dual exhaust for the muffler that spits forward because I don't like uh, yeah like the 61 when you put this wrap handle on it exhaust comes right out the side right into your hand so it's almost pointless to have the handle on the 61 without the proper muffler where I got this muffler here and it does spit it out the front and this muffler's in much better shape than this muffler. So I was almost debating to take this off and put that one on this one. And I'll paint it and clean it. And... Got so much parts. They all fit. That Those are 61s. These are 68. So all these parts fit nicely together. But this one is the good saw that runs really good. Anyways, thanks guys. So, did a little tree job with this guy here. It earned itself a new bar. So I got me a VersaCut. I'm gonna stick with these bars. They're aluminum core. They don't have a changeable nose, but they're pretty much uh, exactly what I want. So, they're nice and light. I find the eight, that's got an 18 on it already, but I found it was just a little bit underpowered and a little bit nose heavy. So I got the 16 with the nice new chain. I'm going to keep this. I got another 18 for it too, and I got a 20 inch bar for it, but honestly, it's not really sensible using. I was trying to get a 14, but they don't make a 14. And they do make a 15, but I had to order it, so I just figured I'd buy this one and had it in stock. Fits my saw. So, yeah, it's, a, it's an Oregon. It's got the 095 for the 95 nose, which it does say on here somewhere. Yeah, the 95. VP. Uh, it does say 10 tooth nose max, but this is a 12. It's got a large nose on it, so uh, we'll see. We'll try this one out. Pretty sure this is, I think this bar is the wrong bar for it because uh, I find it has just a little bit of trouble oiling, but or it gets clogged up or something happens with this bar, so. It's not bad at the moment, and I did get it all sharpened up, chain's not the prettiest, but it does cut pretty good still, a couple teeth are a little messed up, I'm gonna have to hit it with the grinder or something, fix that chain, it does cut really good still, don't get me wrong, but I did get a new bar and chain, so We'll see how she goes. I think this is kind of a perfect match for it, too. With the red and black. and Oh, yeah. Beautiful. I got another one for my Husky there, too. It's an 18-inch bar. And I also ordered a 24 for that guy, too. <laughs> Sorry. 
and the chain I got for it is quite a bit bigger tooth. Quite the quite the beefy tooth in there. Yeah, that's all I could get was a steel chain, so. But it's the proper size. It's a 058 uh, gap. It'll be nice. It'll cut really good. Be nice and uh, strong. Proper. Anyways, I'll show you how she looks when she's done. Thanks. Yeah, she looks good now. It looks nice on there. Slick. It's like the perfect bar for this saw. Uh, beauty definitely need some oil but you just oil it manually first and just toss some oil in there this one doesn't have a oiler for the nose either it is a cheap bar but it's hard to find a lightweight bar so this is two plates with an aluminum plate in the middle so pretty cool I think it looks great. Looks good. Anyways, thanks guys. It's a sad day. I found their little chippy. Not sure what happened to the little guy. If he just died of old age or... I know I've been fighting with this groundhog that's been digging here. Trying to get rid of him. I don't have any guns or nothing like that, but I know the chippy's been uh, coming out back to put nuts in the hole. Poor little guy. Oh yeah, he's cold and hard. Yeah, it sucks. Doesn't look like he's all beat up though. I don't know what would have happened to him if he just came out and died or if he got hurt. He doesn't look injured, so maybe he just got old and died. Looks like he just laid down there and passed away. Poor little guy. He's a good little chipmunk, too. That sucks. Yeah, I'll try not to tell the daughter. I'm just say maybe he moved on. I'm sad. He's a really nice tame chipmunk too. It's not like he was vicious or anything, right? He's a good little guy. Poor little fella. Yeah, well, I'm sure another one will come around and train him just the same. 